Uh, greetings, YouTubers. It's me, Wayman29. And um, this is a reply uh, to B881040 uh, he left the replies uh, to the to the video internalizing the resurrection, and uh, you can go and read the comments there. Um, one of the comments that I'm responding to is, um, "I'm writing a novel." He says he says this in the in the in the comments. I'm writing a novel about belief. There are several systematic functions, functionings wired within the whole brain and how those structures transport emotional factors to affect our passive, active, inner, outer activities. Tons of data I've went through, but you still are the one rare case that redefines things. You are like walking on a fine string with a deep something. What's your main emotional motor? Maybe I shouldn't ask this kind of personal question, but do you know you are recomposing Bible to fit it to that something? Or maybe not. I don't know you that well to make any kind of conclusion. I am just an exciting fan, though I really would be thrilled if you can make a nice little video on that theme. I mean, exciting new fan. And if you do so, please don't be shy to use big words Thank you from deep gratitude. Um, I never had such a fan, so um, uh, it could be a bad thing because it it strokes the ego, and um, I find it interesting that. Um, uh, but a certain amount of uh, a certain amount of um, dignity needs to be preserved whether one person asks a question <laughs> or a hundred. And it's probably easier <laughs> to preserve dignity when you have fewer subscribers because then your um, yourself doesn't kick in and you start um, becoming arrogant and thinking you know everything. Um, I'm just going to ask answer these questions honestly. And um, uh, although I... I have to admit, um, I appreciate the comments, um, and they're most flattering. So I'm trying to um, think about all this. Any, anyway, yes, uh, I I do know I'm on the the string of something, and you can never put words to it. You can only use uh, like examples, and um, I'm not. Nobody's ever there yet. It's it's kind of this journey, and tomorrow, if I figure figure something else out, it, it could all change. So it's like a big bowl of of of, of mixed. It's like a big bowl of chili, all all mixed up. And um, the main thing that drives me is, um, of course, me looking at the metaphor, and no matter if they say they're not doing it, uh, they definitely are recomposing biblical texts. Every time a minister stands up and applies the biblical text to everyday life, and you could do this almost in, in any religion, and um, even though they wouldn't admit they're doing it, it, it still is being used that way. Um... I think that um, I think that uh, Jung and and others have done studies on the super subconscious and, and how um, symbolism and metaphor comes into play, which are pretty interesting reads if you if you want to go that far. Um, but I, but I think that when you move from I don't even know if I'm going to answer these questions. I, I'm going to try not to, uh, because I'm, I'm not really sure uh, what road you want to go down with, uh, with, with such things. Y you have very structured ideas and rituals being performed, and and as life experiences change, 
Um, sometimes those rituals don't speak as loudly as they should. So you end up having the trend like in um, the Vedas where they move from a ritualistic society into something more personal which instead of outward rituals it's it's a quest inward and a lot of the yogis uh, when you move from the Vedas to the Upanishads started asking these these kinds of questions and then it ended up being that only people who renounced society and had really strong um, uh, aspirations to to uh, become free from the wheel of sansha, um, the constant up and down, uh, the constant as good as it gets, that's as bad as it gets, and as bad as it gets, that's as good as it gets, and as you move towards the inner circle, um, you end up um, eliminating a lot of those ups and downs, which is something that I've seen evangelical Christians have issues with um, when they see themselves as most pious and then they fall off the wagon, so to speak, and then it's, it's a continuous process. And this process was later addressed uh, in Buddhism, um, and which realized, you know, the Four Noble Truths of Buddhism, uh, all life is suffering, and and caused by desire and, and and such, and and so he he takes what was learned in the Upanishads, the 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 Vedas and the in the Bhagavad Gita's, and he puts it all into these to this to this package that can be transformed, and that people of that time could view the metaphor in a different way. So so when you when you're dealing with the super subconscious. Um, it's like a, it's, I picture it as a huge iceberg with the tip just showing, and we're not really sure what's, what's underneath. And unknowingly, we take in all these symbols, and um, they end up being expressed and, and coming through the, to the surface through, uh, through different mediums, religion being one of them, um, dreams, and, and many different ways that we express ourselves abstractly and some of the people who, who come up with um, such things and who have been on the quest to know as the yogis would say Atman your 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 inner self um, is a very long process and it can't be explained because um, it's kinda like bugs in a beach ball when you're inside the beach ball with all the other little bugs, and then you're you're you find the hole, and then you go outside, and you and you see the world, and you and you come back in, and you try to explain it to all the other bugs, what you've seen. It has to be used in abstract terminology, because they have never seen it, and um, so then you have uh, rituals being performed so the people can take part in your experience and, and kind of have a glimpse of what you've seen. However, they may never even make it uh, to the outer realms, which is how religious texts, in a way, develop. Um, I, guess, I guess what I'm trying to get at is one of the best examples is um, the uh, book uh, Black Elk Speaks from Native American um, Religion. Um, Black Elk was a Lakota Sioux. He fell sick. Went on this vision, seen the six grandfathers, came back, and uh, created the ritual of the go, uh, the uh, not the ghost dance, the uh, horse dance. Uh, so his community can take part in the abstract expressionism, and by doing that, uh, it was the glue that held together the society in retaliation to the assimilation process that was going on against the Native American population during the days of the Indian uh, removal policy of, of the United States government. Other ways, uh, uh, another example of how this happened was in uh, Hebrew, Hebrew um, when the Hebrews were um, 
taken in captivity by the Babylonians for those uh, 70 years. Um, you had the uh, prophet Ezekiel uh, coming about. He, uh, Yahweh would, would tell him to do certain things, almost little acts or little plays. When somebody would ask him what he was doing, he was to uh, uh, relay to them the message of the gods. Uh, you know, he, he had to lay on his side. He had to uh, do different things. And if you read the text of Ezekiel, uh, you, you'll see um, uh, the ritual or even acting being played out as a message from the gods in abstract terms. Um, I think that the gods are reflections of the human being um, who, when, when we view ourselves as, as perfect, we put that on the gods. However, um, in doing so, maybe by mistake, we give them some of the traits that aren't so perfect. Um, and uh, religion tries to fix this when they try to take violence out of the religion, like moving um, from, you know, peaceful farmers, uh, from Anji to the to the warrior god uh, Indra, and then back to um, the creator god. Um, also, the view of the Hebrews in captivity, where you have the creation story of Genesis 1, where all violence is taken out of the literature, this was in retaliation to the creation story of Marduk and the battle of uh, the cosmos with Timat. Um, so, so things end up becoming more peaceful. And they realize that um, when they're taken over, that it's now a global view. So you have the text of Chronicles written, which more or less includes uh, the region as a whole. Uh, into the kingdom of Israel, rather than like in First and Second Kings, where it was uh, a very exclusive bunch of people. Um, so I guess I guess that um, it's it's very hard to express. Uh, I I guess you you should read the works of Joseph Campbell, George Frazier. Uh, he has a great book, uh, The Golden Bow. Check that out, and um, definitely read. The, uh, the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, uh, the Tao Te Ching, um, and uh, some really good commentaries on the, uh, you know, if you're into that, uh, the, the Old Testament stuff. So, I'm not, I'm not even sure if I answered this, um, but, but I, I believe that people do walk on, on the fine line of whatever it is. And I do believe that the metaphor today and why it's not functioning properly like it should is it is that it needs to be rebuilt. And it needs to be rebuilt in a way that people can use it to benefit themselves on their internal quest. Um, right now, uh, it's, as I said in, one, in my last video, um, the, it's the Harry Potter books, which totally transform... Uh, the metaphoric themes and, and put them into a modern context of of which would allow um, uh, when read which which allows uh, uh, a life application and introspection to to occur uh, with among its readers and, and that's how religious literature is supposed to uh, re religious literature being one medium is is supposed to function I, I believe personally. Um, all right, uh, sorry to be so long-winded. Um, uh, take care, YouTubers. Take care of yourself and each other.